Hello everybody and welcome to another cello tutorial. In today's video we're gonna cover study number 20 by Louis Fillard, Studies of the Young Cellist. In today's number 20, the study number 20, we're gonna cover a study for the dotted notes or in other words it's for the right hand in general. Before we continue with this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell in order to not to miss anything of my tutorials, video recordings and much more. With that said, let's go right into it. Right, you're gonna probably agree with me, but this study is a pretty annoying one. Dotted notes are never really pleasant to play and it's easy, you know, to get dirty notes and so on. But okay, anyway, so let's go again step by step. So first thing that we want to pay attention, what is the study about? Well, as I mentioned before in the introduction of the video, this study is about study for the dotted notes, right? Good. When we have this, we watch the tempo. Here we have Allegro written, okay? So I would say like on a metronome, like a quarter note, maximum 80. So yum, pom, yum, papa. So the tempo that I was playing. Another thing that we need to see, we see some letters there. Until now, well, if you have watched my other videos, I explain what each letter means. But okay, I'm gonna explain over and over again. Nope problem for me. So M, we see in the beginning there's a letter M written, right? That means middle of the bow, right? So we start normally, suppose middle of the bow is that. But as you noticed when I was playing, I don't really play at the middle of the bow. Actually, I go a little bit more closer to the frog. It's because there's a reason for that. It's because it's, e it's difficult to play <laughs> more difficult to have a control so I go a little bit more closer to the bow uh, to the frog so it's like here it's easier to have control because again what is important here index finger is crucial here this is very important good but I'm gonna come in just a bit about that so M means middle right then at the third line we see G which means ganzer Bogen which is German for whole length of the bow, right? So that's the quarter note. So here you can play the whole bow. And then we see SP, which means Spitz, which is at the tip of the bow. And now we have another G. And then we have FR, which means Frosch, which is at the beginning of the bow or the frog of the bow, right? So these are a few terms that it's good to know. But anyway, Fayar explains it in the first or second page of the book. By the way, if you don't have the book, you can get in contact with me through WhatsApp or you can send me a DM on Instagram. I respond to usually within 24 hours and I can send you the PDF either on WhatsApp, either you send me a message on Instagram or either you can send me also an email. So you'll get a PDF. I'll send you personally that. Good. Okay. So we discovered the letters. Of this exercise so what means what so this is important to know first so analyze first the thing like what's about the good thing about this exercise that there's not much variation to it it's all the time the same 
So it's all the time this rhythm, yum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum. Okay, so first thing that is very important. So let's start from the beginning. So first of all, do it slowly because in tempo, you're not going to be able to play everything great, right? So slowly. What you need to pay attention here? So pay attention to my index finger. So there I play, I press and then I release, but then I'm ready for the next one. But then I'm ready for the next one, right? So what you can do is first, you know, as an exercise, take the first beats of each note, right? So we have, and always, you know, put a little bit of pressure on the index finger and then release. Do that for the whole exercise. So again. Press and release. I don't want to see this. No, stay more or less on the string. You can relax the note. You should actually relax the note, but it doesn't mean that you need to go up with the bow. No, stay on the string. See my movement of the hand? So I sit a little bit on my index finger and so do that for the whole exercise in order to develop that thing of press and release or trigger and release um, so that you can do for the whole exercise through. Next thing, then you just practice separately the 16th note, so this figure. Same principle as the one before, so this press release thing. Right? So this is important. One more time. Right? Because then afterwards, when you did that part per part, so first the longer nose, bum, 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 and then ta -tum, then you can try to connect. As you can see now, I release a tiny little bit of the swing, so, but not like that, right? Because you don't have the time, it's allegro. If you play in tempo, you're not going to be able to, you see, it's quite dirty the sound. So the thing is that you need to use a small bow, so don't use too much bow. What happens often when I see people start to play, uh, which is wrong. You see, the sound is not clear. Nothing is clear, right? Okay. The only thing that maybe is fine is the rhythm. Yum, ba pam, ba pam. But stay compact. This is very important. Trigger release. Because you need to come back. So about this amount of bow that you can use. So this is when you are playing the beginning, right? Which is middle, supposed to be here, but I go a little bit more over here because here it's difficult to do. Try it out afterwards. That same thing that I just explained, but really at the middle. This is gonna be difficult. See, you get blocked. So that's why I go a little bit more here. Fine, this was the middle of the bow. No, middle, more or less. Good, so that part, that middle part here, that is for the whole two lines, so you are not supposed to have many difficulties here. Now, the third line starts with the G. So let me play the last measure of the second line in order to go to the third line, right? So there it goes. Now we have a G, so sit on that note and play beautiful and deep. And here immediately firmly. So one more time, stop and always prepare in advance. So one more time, stop. What's happening there? I'm already putting a little bit of pressure in order to do a... So on a 
another thing that you can do separately. So take the bow, put it here at the tip of the bow and then press and release, press and release, press and release. And then the same thing. Do that again for the whole exercise through and then make a combination with it. Then it will supposed to be like this. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention before that I just remembered, it's pay attention to the rhythm. It's easily to play this rhythm like this. One, two, three, one, triplets. You know, it's very easy to play that kind of figure like triplets. One, two, three, yum, pa, pam, pam, pam. No, so always be very rhythmically. Maybe practice with metronome. It's always good to practice with metronome in order to feel that ya ta 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 one two three pa pam pa pam pa pam pam pa pam pa pam. So that was a small thing that I wanted to mention before, but I remembered it now. So, anyways, so this can take a little bit more time than over here. So when you play on the tip of the bow, it's a little bit more difficult to get it under control. So try to develop this. So really, that thing of press release, and again. A small amount of bow. Don't use too much bow. A little bit faster. Now. Also, be careful not to play. Don't play too close to the bridge of the cello because then, you know, it gets you're getting goosebumps. So go a little bit more over here. Experiment. Try to find a place that is gonna sound nice and clean. Also, not too much here because then doesn't sound so more or less in the middle. This you need to pay attention. You know, if you have a mirror, this is excellent. So you put the mirror in front of you, and you just see, like, uh huh, okay, is it in position? First of all, important to stay in one line. So don't play too much like that and not like this because like this it doesn't work. See, so it tries to stay more like a cross. So make sure it's becoming like a cross and then you start to play right so now here comes the bow distribution this is important because we have a G so the whole length of the bow and then suddenly we have spitz so we need to make sure that we arrive here so that's why you need to use the whole bow and then small now we have the whole bow so make sure really to use the whole bow in order to come to the frog of the bow here. I sorry. So this is also difficult, especially on the A string. It's easy to make it scratch. It's easy to make the sound. So this you need to find. So press and release, but also try to find the way that the note sounds clean and free. So not just not like this maybe help a little bit with your elbow I'm not sure I mean probably it will work with me but uh, probably will, will work with some of you but not for everybody so try to find a way thing is that you cannot be blocked you need to be relaxed it needs to be firm your hand your arm needs to be firm but not to relax because if it's too relaxed annoying because the A string it's very it's a very open string so it's easy to make it scratchy I mean it's okay when you play this exercise true it's fine if one or two notes are going to be scratchy that's no problem at all I mean nobody's perfect see so but the important is to try to find the perfection you know these are completely other things you know we're not perfect but we can strive to it right so try to find a way <coughs> Of course, when we play with the left hand on the A string, then the sound gets easy. But this, if it's an open string, see this, this is really... Maybe you try to play with more hair, with all the hair of the bow. Better. But it's all about control. Then about this uh, hair thing, so use all the hair, you can try that also. If it's maybe that that can solve the problem. 
right? So to go back, so G, hold bow, and now be prepared. So the moment you release the long note, see, I release the sound, but I'm ready. I'm already pressing. Ready. Now. Ready. Ready. Okay, so this you need to pay attention. So what you can do is just this. You make breaks in order to be prepared. Okay. And so on. So when you're gonna do this by parts and when you are gonna feel better and comfortable and more used to it, then you can try to connect it. But again, most important is don't use too much bow. Really a small amount of bow. So same here. So I'm using like two centimeters or if you're an American or, or English, British, it's gonna be like a fraction of an inch like this. Um, so anyway, very small amount of bow. Right, so that was the third line and the fourth line. Now, on the fifth line, so the last sequence of the exercise, it's a little bit different. It's not, well, it's not like, whoa, completely different. So again, we have this Ganser Bogen thing, so the letter G, so which means the whole bow. <laughs> just we have one more note so instead of you know now we have another note so what do I like to do here don't really jump with your second finger so don't do like this pay attention here now already press your finger so your second finger your middle finger already on two strings in order to have in order to have this fifth interval right and then you release it. And again, same thing here. So when you see a G, really be generous with the bow. So use the whole bow, then you stay very compact, very concentrated here. Again, the whole length of the bow, and then very compact here, not too much bow. Remember, a couple of centimeters, two, three centimeters, or a fraction of an inch right so this is very important okay for the rest there is not much to say here so really this is an exercise that you have to do it by parts this is not going to be like resulting immediately so it needs a little bit of time this is really like from the 20 exercises that i have done until now this is one of the most annoying i mean sound wise you know for the sound for a very clean sound this is very annoying i'm sure you agree with me so very important to do by parts of so first make sure that you develop this thing of pressing and release without doing that because we get tricked we see points immediately we think it's like a, ah no it's not like that i mean of course you release and when you release the bow of course like a couple of millimeters you go up because of that see a little bit but not too much Never exaggerate too much here in this kind of things, right? Good. Now, there's just one thing I want to mention here about the left hand, which is on the second line, second measure. We see here there is a shift, right? So I'm going to show you from the second line. This one. This. So what is important here, as it's, the exercise is going in a quite fast tempo, so it's important that your shift is also very active, very fast. So what you can do is just practice this separately. So before you even play with your bow, your left hand is in position. So let me do it a little bit slower. Ready. See, one more time. Ready. Now a little bit faster, ready, ready. 
and so on. Okay, no, as that fast you don't need to do, but this is important. So be ready. And again, make sure that your middle finger is already touching the two strings together. See? So this you need to train a couple of times. First of all, when you are feeling more secure about the change, so when you're holding second finger normally, okay, fine, then you can go to the next step, which is already hit the two strings. And on the moment you play, then you release. So let me show this measure very slowly so that you can understand what I mean. See? Did you see it? Let me show you one more time. So what happened? So see, I just went like that. All right. So this is probably like the most challenging thing for the left hand here in this exercise. Same thing happens in the fourth line, second measure. So we have the fourth uh, line. Sorry. Now, same here. So make sure to do that, okay? So that was actually it for today's exercise. It's not much to say here, it's just because it repeats, the pattern repeats the whole time. So pay attention to these things. The most important thing here is the right hand arm. So do that per part, really. This is an exercise that you need to do per part and then bit by bit, you know, you add one measure more, then you try from the beginning. You're gonna need to, to have a little bit of uh, more of patience. But when you're gonna be able to play this exercise on a reasonable level, then it means that your right hand is really under control and right hand is crucial in cello playing because right hand will produce the sound. And well, what is the cello famous for? It's because of the beautiful sound. So, okay, pay attention to these things, what I have mentioned today. It's quite a short video, so it's, your homework actually so i just gave you a couple of spots that you need to pay attention now it's up to you well with this i finish for today in a couple of days we're gonna see each other with 21 so study number 21 and well i thank you all so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful and well have a good practice i would say and lots of patience with this one because this one is pretty annoying including for me you're not alone Okay, guys, have a great week, have a great day, have a good practice, and we'll see us in a couple of days. See you. Bye-bye.